Every Mid-American Conference school hopes their football team is represented at Ford Field twice during the season. Everyone's trying to get here for the championship game in December. Everybody's guaranteed to be here in July at Media Day. And that's where the anticipation for the season really starts. And that's where we join you from. Hi again, everybody. I'm Russ Eisenstein. Rob Cornelius joins me. We're back again for year nine. How about that, Rob? See, nine years of you and I together. This act just keeps on rolling. Never would have bet on that, but you're right, Russ. The most <laughs> important thing, Ohio wants to go back to week 13, period. And week 13 is what we call the MAC championship. Haven't been here in a while for that game, and Ohio certainly thinks this team could be the one to break back through. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since the heartbreaker against Northern Illinois a couple of seasons ago. Ohio was picked second in the MAC East behind defending champion. Bowling Green, that's not a bad spot to be. No, not bad. And, you know, it's better to maybe chase than be chased. And Bowling Green, frankly, new coach, a lot of missing pieces, a lot of returning O-line. But Ohio's right there in position ahead of Akron where they could not really sneak up on folks right. but stalk the field and be there come week 12. Yeah, the East really is wide open because of, as we talked about, Bowling Green losing their head coach, new head coach, uh, same system but losing some parts from that ball club from last year. So really, the East is a toss-up, and Ohio is most certainly a chance to be near the top of the end. Yeah, very much qualified to be there. Got some first-place votes in the East. And you look at it last year, you need to get by some of the games. You didn't beat Buffalo last year in a bad midseason run. Need to beat those guys. Obviously, Miami opens up conference play for Ohio in Week 5. Mm -hmm. A lot going on there. And, of course, the West, power may be back over there again this year. Yeah, the West is very good, and the top part of it is outstanding. Western Michigan is picked at the top. Toledo is 2, Northern Illinois 3, Central Michigan 4. That is a loaded foursome at the top of the West. Yeah, it really is. You know, Western Michigan, we thought they'd break through last year. This year, everyone agrees almost. I believe 19 of 27 votes select them to come here to this building and win in Week 13 of the MAC Championship. Ohio gets over the course of the season. They get that Toledo team. New coach, but they return a bunch of talent. And Central also good they could be the three team in that West. Yeah it will be interesting to see and Northern Illinois is uh, shuffled down a little bit more but talking to PJ Fleck the head coach at Western Michigan he said that uh, Northern is the champion of the West until somebody proves them wrong and of course they've won it so much over the years and Ohio's big win at the end of last season was over NIU on a frigid night in DeKalb leading into a very good bowl game even though it was a lost Appalachian State. We talked to Frank Solich sure. the interview's been aired here on Bobcat TV there is optimism there's work to do but this ball club feels that there are the tools there to be successful on both sides of the ball and even with special teams. Yes, yeah, certainly are. The defense uh, could be one of the league's best. Again, front seven, no doubt. Or Quentin Poling, one of the top linebackers of this league, maybe the top guy. And the Ohio D-line, Casey Sales joined us today. But again, depth, eight, nine, ten deep across that front of the D-line. Where are the questions? What's the question Frank Solich has gotten the whole offseason? How yeah. many times can you be asked about a quarterback? Yeah. We did it again today. Yeah, we'll talk to him at Ohio Media Day as well. We'll break down both sides of the ball as we get back to Athens too. There's a whole lot of work being done here at Ford Field to get ready for the Lions and of course the conclusion of Mac Media Day as well. From a broad stroke standpoint, the league had three bowl champions last year. That's good. Hopefully some opportunities to capture some non-conference wins this go around and hopefully more than just three bowl game victories come bowl season in a couple of months. Yeah, and there are some chances for the Miami people call Tomahawk wins in this league. Yeah. Some wins in September are quite possible. Some teams are scheduled up, some are scheduled down. Western's got an easier run. Ohio, you look at Kansas, you think that's an opportunity. You look at Tennessee, difficult. But yeah. Ohio's going to be nationally televised in that one as well. It is amazing how quickly time flies by, huh? It's uh, you and I, we were done in, in March with a nice run in postseason with Bobcat men's basketball, and we're right back at it with Jason and Derek and the whole gang again here in Detroit. And we keep sitting here in what apparently is the glory era of Ohio sports, bowl eligible over and over and over again. And basketball is back to fun times in the uh, big room on Richland. This is good. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. We're excited to be back with you. Two good buddies doing work on the radio and TV together. And we'll join you again. Come Mid-American Conference, uh, uh, actually Bobcat Media Day in a couple of weeks at Peden Stadium. That will put the wraps on our coverage of Media Day in Detroit. For Jason and Derek and for Rob Cornelius, I'm Russ Eisenstein. So long from Detroit, this is Bobcat TV.